All right, if you watch any of my videos from the past two months, you could probably guess that I like the bus. And you'd be right, ever since coming to college, every single day, I've ridden the bus to get to pretty much any place I need to get to. School, work, groceries, concerts, and sporting events downtown. Like, literally every time I go somewhere, I'd probably have to ride the bus. And I like riding the bus because, you know, I, I think it's cool. But I know that riding the bus can suck sometimes. In fact, many times riding the bus sucks. If implemented incorrectly, buses can be cumbersome, slow, unreliable, and generally unpleasant. But in our chaotic world, we need solutions to climate change, to economic inequalities, to traffic, and to those sky-high gas prices that nobody wants to pay for. A lot of those issues have roots in the transportation sector, so the simple, efficient, and effective solution many times is the bus. So how do we make the bus better so more people can ride it so we can fix some of those problems? In this video, I'll be talking a lot about bus rapid transit, but a lot of these improvements can be conducted on just local buses. With bus rapid transit, it comes in a lot of different names. Here in Minneapolis, it's known as the Orange Line, Red Line, and Arterial Bus Rapid Transit System. In Denver, it's the Flatiron Flyer, Seattle, Rapid Line, uh, Cleveland is like the Health Line or something, Boston is the Silver Line. A lot of different names for basically the same thing. The general gist, and I say general because there's a lot of different discrepancies, is that these bus rapid transit systems are here to reduce a lot of the issues that come along with regular buses particularly speed, reliability, and accessibility. And all of this at much lower upfront costs of construction. So right now, I'm about to ride the flagship arterial bus rapid transit bus here in the Twin Cities, the A-Line. And I'm gonna talk about the, the advantages that come with bus rapid transit, as well as some of the disadvantages. In his book, Better Buses, Better Cities, author Stephen Higashide highlights the current issues with our bus systems. The foremost issue being reliability. With a car, you can go to and leave a location at any time you want. You have that freedom. But if you live in a city with bad public transit, you live around the bus schedule. If you miss the bus going to school or work, well, the next bus might not be coming for another 30 to 60 minutes. You constantly have to think about when the next bus is going to come. When possible, we need to get those headways from 30 to 60 minutes to a bus every 10 to 15 minutes. When a bus is come every 10 to 15 minutes, you don't really have to look at a bus schedule. You just show up to the stop and rest assured a bus will be coming at most in the next 10 minutes. That makes it much more convenient for people to use the bus, increases reliability, and you get to see more ridership from that. But reliability isn't just about frequency, even though that's a large part of it, but also timeliness. Who wants to ride a bus if it's going to be late by 10 minutes half the time? That's why there's a lot of things that bus rapid transit can do to live up to that rapid name. The first is implementing bus lanes across the route. There's a big difference between Nicollet Mall, seen here in Minneapolis, and University Avenue near the University of Minnesota. Can you spot the difference? One is just bus lanes allowing for multiple routes to quickly move through downtown. The other has to deal with other traffic because all the lanes on the street are general use, which slows the bus down. By avoiding the traffic caused by general use lanes, buses are able to travel down corridors at a faster pace and avoid all of the traffic that they might be caught up against. In London, when they implemented bus lanes in their projects, it significantly reduced travel and waiting times while also increasing ridership by 21%. That's pretty significant. Transit Signal Priority, or TSP, also makes buses more efficient and reliable. The simplified explanation of TSP is it's a system where transit vehicles communicate with traffic lights using GPS, laser technology, or loop detectors. Basically, when the bus gets close to the intersection, the traffic lights will prioritize the bus by extending the green light just long enough for the bus to get through, or shorten red lights in order to get to the green faster. This reduces the amount of stopping buses need to do, and thus speeds up the trip. Across the nation, when you combine bus lanes and TSP, it helped to reduce travel times by more than 20%. Or when you add that up for every person, 40 hours per year per person. 
that's a lot. That's an entire work week that you save by just having a, a transit system that has bus lanes and transit signal priority. And increased reliability is so important in getting more people on the bus. The A-Line and MSP saw on-time performance rise to 94%. Bus lanes and TSP aren't necessarily exclusive to BRT. A lot of other local buses can use that, but it is an innovation that comes pretty much directly tied to BRT, so I figured I'd mention it. The second aspect is speed. Nobody wants to ride a bus if commuting takes 45 minutes and riding a car would only make that commute 15 minutes. And yes, we can reduce the amount of uh, time that it spends to travel using TSP or bus lanes, but there are also a lot of things that we can do as planners of bus lines to help reduce the dwell time or the amount of time that buses spend at one station at one time. The first is level boarding, where the platform of the bus and the platform of the station are going to be flush, they're going to be level, which makes it easier to get on the bus. Now this makes it easier for people with accessibility issues that need to use a wheelchair, a cart, or might just in general need more time to get on the bus. It makes it easier for them to get on it, which reduces the amount of time that buses spend at any one station. So you don't have to flip down a ramp, you don't have to lower the bus, it's all just in and out very, very quickly. One of the things that really slows down buses is the payment process, because you pay everything on the actual bus. So all the cash payments, uh, cards, all the, the bus passes, that all gets handled on the actual bus, which means everyone has to pay for it one by one, which adds multiple different minutes to every single stop on a bus line. So when you have offboard payments like this one right here, it's really simple because everyone just pays before they get on, which means when they actually get on, everyone can just hop on without having to pay. Everything is more streamlined, it's faster, and the bus is able to leave at a faster rate. The third strategy you can take is having limited stop patterns. This is a little more complicated, so I'm gonna simplify it down a little bit. So when we have buses, local buses, it usually stops every other block usually, which is good when you wanna have higher accessibility, more people have a bus stop near them. But in terms of reliability, having so many bus stops slows down a bus. So in turn, the way that we can speed up the entire bus trip is by having more limited stops every five blocks instead of every two blocks. Like for example, here, the A-line is right behind the camera, but the next stop isn't for another few blocks. By having the bus stops more spaced out, we can find the balance between accessibility and reliability. Basically making sure that we don't sacrifice accessibility by having the bus stops too far apart, but we make sure that we're not stopping too much. One of the issues that I think is very severely underrated when it comes to buses is just how terrible station design can get. Station design matters. This means covered bus shelters, heated if you have the budget, and real-time scheduling if you have the care, but most importantly, regular maintenance done so there's no snow in the way, or there's nothing broken or messy about the station. This also means adequate lighting around the station, which was seen to improve safety and security around it. I really like the E-Line in Minneapolis that's currently getting planned because I like that it very clearly serves a population that relies on transit a lot, college students. It's replacing the six that goes through the University of Minnesota campus, and while it's the fourth most popular route that Metro Transit runs, ask any U of M student and many of them might not know it. But they do know and have ridden on the Green Line, and how could you miss it? Every 10 minutes, a giant light rail train passes through the heart of campus with the station very clearly visible and riding on the train very intuitive and easy to understand. The light rail makes itself known, but the bus doesn't. Look at University Avenue. You wouldn't be able to tell that a route that services 10,000 people a day passes through here. Part of the issue of buses that Bus Rapid Transit seeks to fix and that a lot of transit agencies are trying to address is the fact that a lot of bus lines are just not visible to people that aren't in tune with transit. Making better stations, increasing ease of use, adding painted bus lanes, and making the bus line have a special name makes people realize that there's good transit here that they can use, so ridership will increase. 
And a study done on the A-line found that housing prices in the area didn't substantially increase. They stayed relatively stagnant, which is good because it tells us that we can make these improvements without causing large-scale gentrification. Thus, these improvements, if implemented correctly, are can be seen as a net positive. Even more so when you consider the costs compared to other projects. Projects like arterial bus rapid transit will only cost a couple tens of millions of dollars to implement. Off the top of my head, I think most of them are going to be less than $100 million, which when you take into account how expensive some transit projects in America can get, is a godsend. We can make buses more enjoyable, increase ridership, not increase gentrification, and also do it for relatively cheap. That seems like a win-win. Okay, so bus rapid transit sounds sick. Why don't we build this literally everywhere in the U.S.? Well, there's some issues. First and foremost, bus rapid transit is so, so easy to bastardize. With light rail, you know at the basic level what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a dedicated lane, high capacity, and traffic priority. Bus rapid transit doesn't really have a set definition in people's heads. In some places, they just put a label on a slightly improved bus and call it a day. There are good examples out there, the Albuquerque Rapid Transit System, which is the first and only BRT service in the U.S. to get a gold ranking from the Institute for Transportation Development and Policy. In fact, ridership in that transit system increased by 30% in their first year. But for every success, there's utter and complete failures. But the one that I have personally written on that I absolutely detest is the Silver Line in Boston. I'm sorry, Bostonites, but the Silver Line sucks, and I'm pretty sure most people in Boston would agree with me. There's barely any dedicated bus lanes, offboard payment isn't universal quite yet, the speed is super slow, and it just sucks to ride on. It was advertised as a cheaper and easier to build alternative to a light rail, even though it took 15 years after the old Washington Street Elevated got torn down to implement. And at the time of building, it was the single most expensive BRT project in the entire world. This is a long-winded way into saying that if your city is not going to properly invest time and money to make a good BRT system or to make good improvements into your local buses, then you're really just shooting yourself in the foot and really, you might as well have not built it in the first place. The quality of service will not be there, ridership will not see the substantial increase that we've seen in other systems, and you're gonna be out sometimes a hundred million dollars for a crappy bus. If politicians and your city want to implement BRT because they're too cheap for light rail and think that building something shiny and cheap will be some kind of cool political win, then it they might as well have not built it at all because it's just not going to work. There's a lot of advantages that come with bus rapid transit. You get higher speeds, reliability, and accessibility, but it's not without its drawbacks. It's really easy to get wrong, and a lot of times politicians do get it wrong because they think it's gonna be easier or cheaper than just building you know, light rail or subway lines, even if it means that the entire quality of a transit line goes down because of it. Now, BRT is not supposed to replace rails. It never really can. It is supposed to improve buses. In essence, BRT is just improved buses. And like it or not, we're going to need better buses and better bus systems in order to improve our transit systems across the nation. I hope that this video highlights that BRT systems like the A-Line here aren't some technological feat, but it's not easy either. In order to improve our transit systems, we need better buses. So let's start improving them and building them better.